use advantage scope to help us debug code when we uh, don't even have access to the robot. So what I've pulled up here um, is a log file from uh, a simple test done on the robot uh, just to test out the, uh, the beta for 2023 um, and the latest advantage scope features and specifically focused on odometry um, in terms of uh, there were some significant changes for that and, and are we doing the right thing and does a robot think it is where it actually is. Um, and so I've got the odometry tab open here in advantage scope. Um, I've added that. And then here's our robot right here and, and we're enabled and we're about to, to drive. And I can uh, change the time here, but I can hit play here so that we can actually see what happens to the robot. So let me do that. And when I do that, you can see that the robot just flew off the field, um, which is not what I expected. Uh, so what I then did is I took a closer look using the line graph here. So I've got the line graph set up here and I'm gonna zoom in on this region here. Um, you know, do that. And so uh, several different lines here, so I'm gonna to toggle them to make them easier to see. The blue line at the top here on the left axis um, is like the X coordinate of the odometry, and we can see it ranges from zero to 1400 meters, that's over a kilometer, it's a little far. Um, this like reddish one is the Y one, and we can see that ranges from zero to negative, I don't know, 3,500 or so. So that's three kilometers, also pretty far. So something's clearly wrong with the odometry. That's why it zips off the field. Um, so I wasn't quite sure what was going on there. Uh, so on the right axis with this scale, um, I put the drive distance in meters of each of the uh, four swerve modules. And these numbers are a lot more realistic. Um, we can see them uh, ranging between, you know, uh, zero and, and at most four and a half meters. So that seems that seems pretty good. Um, the odometry is under the real output section. Here's all the stuff related to that. Here's the odometry for the robot. Um, the swerve module stuff is in a different section. That's more of a hardware. Uh, that's logged by the hardware layer. So you can see up here we have mod zero, mod one, mod two, mod three, with all of the values related to each swerve module um, handled at that hardware abstraction layer. So um, so I had to go figure out what was wrong. Um, and so I will show you uh, the bug um, that I had in just a moment here. Well, we're in the swerve module class here. Um, and what I, what I ended up doing is reading through this and, and saw something that looked off. Uh, what I could have done is I could actually set breakpoints in here, um, replay that log file through the simulator, um, and actually step through the code, which would be really helpful if it, if it was more challenging. In this case, what I realized I had done is in the get position method here that returns a swerve module position. That's one of those new classes we're using for odometry and pose estimation in 2023. Um, I had chosen to record, uh, set the distance to the drive position in degrees, which is certainly not what I want. Um, and obviously the drive wheel has moved many more degrees than it has meters, and so that would explain why the odometry thought we were kilometers away. So I'm gonna change this to drive distance meters, um, and that's what we actually want to uh, build the swerve module out of. Um, so I can rebuild this. Um, which I will do. Um, and then the cool thing here is that we can test this out um, by just running uh, in simulation mode um, by, replaying the const by replaying the log file. So if I go to the constants file here, we can see that I have already set it here that if I'm in simulation now, I'm in replay mode versus sim mode. And so it's gonna replay the, um, the file that by default, the file that is currently open in advantage scope, which is exactly what we want. Um, so I'm gonna simulate robot code. I'm gonna do the sim GUI. We're gonna continue. That's like a, a different bug going on. Launches the simulator. I'm not doing anything because uh, it's just replaying the file as quick as it can. So it doesn't take long to replay that entire thing. Um, and what it does do then is it saves a new log file um, that I can now open. So let me do that. 
So here's the new log file. You'll notice it's the same timestamp as before, but it has underscore sim in it. Um, all the hardware stuff will be exactly the same because those were replayed from before. Um, but I can add a new tab here for odometry. Um, and what you'll notice is different now is there's real outputs. Um, these will be unchanged from the original log file. So I could drop in um, the robot as like the ghost here. So that's from the original log file. But now there's a new heading here called replay outputs, um, which has all the same information. But these are the ones that were logged as a result of replaying against the new code. Um, and so with that change, I can now drag the new robot odometry to here. And I can fast forward in time to here. And we can see the difference here between the old code and the new code. Um, so if I play this, I'm going to actually change the origin system to center um, just so that it's easier to see what's on the field. Um, and now if I play, we're going to see how the ghost is, the ghost zips by um, and our robot moves quite slowly and normally and as expected. Um, and so this is cool that I was able to uh, verify this bug fix um, without actually having access to the robot, um, simply by replaying the previous log file um, in the simulator against the new code that I had made, which is great. So I think this will be a really cool feature for us this year to help us improve our productivity.